Hey survivors, in this video I'm going to show you guys how to retexture vanilla or modded items using hidden selections. So before we begin, I recommend you download Eliteness from Micro's tools or just download the all-in-one installer and get all of the tools. But in today's video, I'll be using Eliteness to show you a little trick. If you watched my previous video on adding attachment slots and overriding vanilla files, this should look familiar to you. This is the code from that lesson. If you haven't, go back and watch that because it is uh, important if you are new to modding. For today's video, we are going to focus on creating a brand new item in game, which inherits from a vanilla item and retextures it. So this canteen is going to be a black canteen and it is going to have all the same properties as the vanilla canteen with a different texture. So the first thing we need to know about an item before we can retexture it is whether or not it has a hidden selection. If it doesn't have hidden selections defined, then we cannot override the texture. The way to find out if an item can be retextured is to look for its hidden selections in the CPP file. If it has one, that's a great indicator that it can be retextured. If it doesn't have one in the CPP file, we can use eliteness to check the config models of the object that we want to retexture. So I'll show you what I mean in a second. First of all, let's look up an item that definitely can be retextured, something like barrels. We know there are several different colors of barrels in game. So let's search class barrel in PDZ. Here we go. Class barrel red, hidden selection textures. This is the red texture for a barrel. And if we go up to the barrel color base, this is what we need to see to be able to retexture an item. We need to have the hidden selections defined. So for barrel, it's chemo ground. For other items, it could be Zabitech. There's all different words. For some reason, there's dozens of different words that are used rather than just texture. I'm sure there's a good reason for it, but I don't know what it is. You have to go and figure out what the hidden selection is before you can retexture an item. So let's look up canteen. If we look at the canteen CPP definition, you'll notice it's actually missing the hidden selection array. There is no hidden selection array defined. So what we now need to do in order to determine whether or not this can be retextured at all is to go to the P3D file. So DZ gear drinks canteen, DZ gear drinks canteen. And if you have eliteness installed through micro tools, you can double click this P3D file. This will open up and then you can double click again on the P3D in that list there. And this is what we're interested in. On the right here, we'll get the config models for this object. And what we need to see is the P3D name here, Canteen, which is this name here, needs to have a sections array with the texture defined. So in the object builder, the creator of this model needs to select all of the texture faces of the object and define this section in the model. And then they need to add this to the config models. Not every item in the game has this. And so not every item in the game can be retextured this way. There are some tricks to get around that, which I'll show you at the end of the video for some items like NVGs, you can retexture NVGs, but there's a bit of a trick you need to go through to get that to work. For now, let's focus on items that have a hidden selection defined. So this is defined in the model, but not in the vanilla game files. So what we now need to do is come to our mod and add this hidden selection, Zabitech, into our hidden selections array. Once we had that, we can then define a file path to a new texture. So hidden selections defines the selection and hidden selections textures defines the file path to assign to this texture for this object. To retexture an item, I'm not gonna go over that today because that's outside my skill set. really. I'm not a graphic designer, but to get you started, what you would do is come to the object you want to reskin, like the canteen, go into the data folder, and then if you've installed the DayZ tools the same way I have, you'll be able to just double click on this texture file. If that doesn't work, then bring up your DayZ tools and, and then come down to text view, and then click open and then navigate to that same folder and open that file. You wanna save this, save as a PNG file. So override the file path to be PNG, and then you can open that PNG in your favorite image editor, and you can play around with the colorization and hopefully do a really good job of retexturing the item properly. So here is my reskin canteen. I've just made it black. 
So now I can save a copy to my mod folder. So that is my template folder, data, textures, canteen. And I'll just call this canteen underscore black underscore co to stick with the vanilla naming convention. Save that file. Now what we need to do is convert this PNG file into a PAA texture file. There are a couple of ways we can do that. I believe if you have PAA added to the list of files to copy directly, it'll automatically convert PNG into that, into a PAA file. So if I pack my mod here, um, or it might be binarize all textures needs to be ticked down here. If you have that ticked, when you compile your mod, it will automatically compile all PNG files into a binarized PAA form. Alternatively, you can do it through the text view. Go text view, drag your texture into here, and then file save as, and then make this a PAA file. Once you have a PAA file in your mod folder, all you need to do now is define the file path to your texture. So mine is data textures canteen canteen black code.paa. Put that in there. Compile my mod. Now we can jump in game and see if this object will spawn. If it does spawn, then don't forget that if you're going to add this to your server, you need to add a types XML entry for this item name, or it won't spawn in the world. And if it does spawn, it'll uh, despawn very quickly. It won't have a lifetime persistence. All right, now let's see if our item created properly. Canteen, Zen Canteen Black, spawn that in. There we go, texture works fine. If you haven't got the right texture file path, then the object will appear all white in game. If that happens, then just double check you've got your file path correctly set up here. All right, to wrap up the video, let's go over some of the files which you can retexture using an RVMAT method uh, that if they don't have a hidden selection. So here is a mod created by a friend of mine, SpaceCat. Uh, I'll leave a link to this mod, his GitHub, uh, below somewhere in the d video description. He taught me a method for overriding certain files using an RVMAT method. By overriding the damage system, you can tell the game the image texture to use directly in the damage RV mats. So typically, if we go to the vanilla files for NVGs, let's go to DZ, characters, glasses, uh, NVGs. If we open up the NVG P3D. Now, the first thing I would do if I was retexturing a file is check if any of these sections retexture the item. In the case of NVGs, I don't believe they do. I believe these are for animations and other, not every selection or section is going to be a texture selection. Um, but try these first. If that doesn't retexture the item, then this is an alternative method. What you want to do is go to the NVG or whatever item you're reskinning. In this case, we'll go with NV goggles. Go to NV goggles, copy all of this into your mod. Don't forget to require this uh, as a required add-on. You don't need to do that in this particular case, but again, good habit to get into. And if we wanted to retexture the NVGs, we would define the NVGs and then change our class name and inherit from NV goggles. What we're interested in here is the damage system. So that's all we want to keep from the night vision goggle definition. And this is where the RV mats are defined. So RV mats are like the in-game damage layer. So if I spawn on the ground, let's just do some NVGs. NV goggles, if I change this to badly damaged. Now, if we look at these two items, notice this one has a damage layer applied. That's done through the RV mat. We'll cover RV mats in a different video when we get to 3D modeling. For now, all you need to know is that if you can't retexture the object using a hidden selection, one alternative method you can try is overriding these values to texture files. Not every object will work this way, but some do, so it's worth a try. So if we look at Space Cat's mod, the first thing he's done is change the maximum health to 1.01, .01, so it can never be reached in game. Um, this is an important part of the process. So what I would do is copy this into my mod and then change each texture file path to whatever my file path is. And if we open up Space Cat's uh, textures here, he has a couple of different NVG types, three different types, Marpat, Tan, and Woodland. If you look at Marpat, that is the texture of the pristine NVGs. And if we go down to damaged, you can see the damage layer is overlaid in Photoshop or some image editing software directly. Normally, the vanilla files would have a pristine texture, and then they would layer 
damaged textures over it using the RV mat. This method that SpaceCat is using directly overrides the RV mat. And what that means is you need to create a damaged texture for each damage type directly on the texture itself. So the way we would do that is look through the DZ folder for the damage and destruct RV mats of a relevant object. Double click on that and you can find the file path to that texture mask. So DZ characters data generic damage. Certain objects might have specific damage masks. So wooden objects, metal objects might be a little bit different. So make sure to get the right damage overlay for your item. So we go to characters data generic uh, damage MC. This is actually a transparent file. The gray area is transparency. So if I save this as a PNG file on my desktop, the destruct would be the same process. Save that as a PNG file on my desktop. If we open up nvgheadstrap.co, this is the NVG Google RV mat for the headstrap and the NVGs. So now I would save this as a PNG file. I would open up the NVGs into my Photoshop or at any photo editing, image editing software. And I would also bring in the damage RV mat, copy that over my texture. Um, and I can just drag that across. And if I hide my grid here and lower the opacity to this a bit, uh, you can see we now have a damaged texture and now I can recolorize the NVGs however I want to and have that damage material directly on the texture so that when we override the RV mat texture for each damage state, the item will look appropriate when it's damaged. This also works with vehicles, by the way, like car doors, things like that. The catch is when you spawn this item in game, it will never be pristine. The highest health quality it can have is worn. But since worn textures look the same as pristine and the health hit points are the same, that's purely a cosmetic thing. So when you spawn these in in game, they will always spawn as worn. But technically, even if they're 100% HP, they have the same HP as a pristine set of night vision goggles. It's just because of the RV mat override method, the item can never be pristine. Otherwise, that breaks this whole technique. So I hope you guys found this interesting. I'll leave links below to everything I mentioned in this video and I'll speak with you in the next one. Take care.